Let's stand for the reading of God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's begin with verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you had taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. And I love this next part. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. May God add his richest blessings through the reading of his word. You may be seated. Debate. Debate. Debate that I'm going to share with you today answers two key questions that make it easy to fish because, and it makes it simple to catch fish. And it makes it both easy and simple to for the fish, really, to become followers of Christ. What are the two questions? Well, number one, what does a person need to know to become a Christian? And number two, what does a person need to do to become a Christian? Well, the answer is the same for everybody. Regardless of who you are, the answer is the same For everyone, it's as simple as the four-letter word, sure. S-U-R-E, sure. I want you to remember those four letters. Oh, what they need to do. So let's look at number one. Number one, C, begins with the letter S. See that you are a sinner in God's eyes and separated from him. You must see that you're a sinner in God's sight, in God's eyes, and that you are separated from him. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the first thing any person must know if they're going to become a Christian. You will never see God correctly through your eyes until you understand how God sees you through his eyes. He sees you and me for just what we are, and that is we are sinners. You wonder or not whether you're a sinner, let me make it plain and simple. If you're not perfect, you qualify. Unfortunately, we're living in a day when instead of admitting that they're short of the glory of God, libraries are filled with volumes of books written by psychologists and sociologists and philosophers trying to answer the basic questions question and that is what's wrong with this world what's wrong with this world well the answer is in the question what is wrong with this world is the world in fact and the truth is that that we have to lovingly share the fact and the truth of sin to people without Christ we must tell the lost We must tell the fish of this world what sin is and call it for what it is or else they will never see their need for Jesus Christ. I read a funny story about a a young boy who had invited a girl in his school to go to church with him. This was the dialogue according to the boy's mother. The boy said to the little girl, have you ever stolen a pencil or something like that? And the little girl said, yes. And the boy said, do you know what that makes you? And the little girl said, no. And the boy said, that makes you a thief. 
And the boy said, have you ever lied? Lied about anything to anyone? And the old girl said, yes. And the old boy said, do you know what that makes you? And the little girl said, a liar? And the boy said, exactly. And the boy said, have you ever killed a bug? Or a spider or an ant? And the little girl said, yes. And the boy said, and that makes you? And the little girl said, a killer? And the little boy said, yep. And the little boy said, now, where do you think that thieves, liars, and killers go after they die? To heaven or to hell? And the little girl said, probably not heaven, right? And the little boy said, that's right. And that's why I would like to invite you to come to go to church with me. And the little girl said, okay. Now, though I do not advocate that as an approach you should take, and that little boy understand that the, understood that the very first thing a person must know if they're going to make it to heaven is that they are sinners in God's eyes. And they're separated from him. Number two, understand. Starts with a U. Understand that Jesus Christ died for your sin and my sin. He died for your sins and came back from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the passage that we just read states, by this gospel you're saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sin according to scripture that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to scriptures folks listen this is the gospel in a nutshell this is the only remedy for the sin problem we have a sin problem but this is the remedy for it understand that Jesus Christ died for your sin and came back from the dead. Jesus Christ alone lived a sinless life. Therefore, he alone could die in our place for our sin. He alone has been raised from the dead. That is why he alone is the only way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. Folks, this is the cross. The cross, it's both a bridge and a wall. It's a bridge, but it's also a wall. It's a bridge to heaven for those who take it. But it's a wall over heaven for those who reject it. If you're going to become a Christian, there's two things you must know. You must know that you're a sinner in God's eyes and separated from him. And number two, you must know that Jesus Christ died for your sin and came back from the dead. But I want you to see number three. Number three, receive, it begins with an R. Receive God's forgiveness for your sin by trusting Christ as your savior. First John chapter 1 verse 7 says, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us, purifies us from all of our sin. If you see that you're a sinner, then you understand the only remedy for sin is forgiveness. Understand if you're here this morning and you know you're a sinner and for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you know that, then you must understand that the only remedy for sin is forgiveness. And that is exactly what a Savior does. Provide forgiveness. If the world had needed knowledge, God would have sent a teacher the world had needed money, God would have sent an economist. If the world had needed technology, God would have sent a scientist. If the world had needed peace, 
God would have sent a diplomat. But the world needed forgiveness. So God sent a Savior. Christianity, folks, listen, it's not about punishment. It's about getting out of the punishment we deserve. Christianity is not about being good. It's about how to find forgiveness when you finally realize that compared to God, you are not good. The first thing you must do in order to be sure that you have eternal life is to receive God's forgiveness for your sin and trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a fourth thing that completes the word. Express. Begins with an E. Express your desire for Christ to be the Lord of your life. Express your desire for Christ to be the Lord of your life. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 tells us, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Jesus, listen folks. Jesus wants to do more than just cancel your sin. He wants to control your life. It's more to being a Christian than just going to heaven. In fact, the word saved in this verse means the same thing as to have eternal life. Two Alabama seminary students decided that they would spend their summer doing evangelistic work in a rural area. And one hot summer day, they stopped their car in front of a farmhouse. And they walked up the path through a gauntlet of screaming children and barking dogs everywhere. And when they knocked on the screen door, they could see the mother of the home inside the house changing a dirty diaper of one of the little boys, while another one was screaming their lungs out around her. And there was another little girl pulling on her dress, trying to get her attention, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. And at the same time, the telephone was ringing. And all this was going on at the same time and she wiped the dirt from her blouse and sweat from her forehead and she asked the men at the door what they wanted and they looked at her and said, well, we would like to tell you how to have eternal life. That exhausted mother thought for a moment and said, thank you very much, but I don't believe I can stand it. (laughs) Folks, listen. We need to understand that eternal life begins the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's not something that happens long after when you die. Eternal life begins now. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. We have eternal life now. It's a life that is right with God now and spent with God for all eternity. Well, I've told you two things you need to know to become a Christian. And I've told you two things you need to do to become a Christian. Once you know what you need to know and you do what you need to do, then then and only then can you be for sure. You have eternal life. What's even better, you can not only know that for sure, you can help others know that for sure. Began this series asking a question, what would Jesus see if he were here today? What would he see if he was here today? Well, I don't think he would see a building I think he would see a boat. As followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're in a boat. 
Jesus has said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And in the crowd this morning, I think Jesus would see two types of people. If he were here today physically and looked out into this crowd, he would see two types of people. Fishermen and fish. Let me let, let you in on a little secret. You're either one or the other. If you're a follower of Christ, you're a fisher of men. You're a fisherman. If you're not a follower of Christ, if at no time you've made a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're a fish. And our hope and prayer is here at First Baptist that we can go fish for you. That we can share Christ with you. That we can cast our net. That we can cast our line out into the water. That you'll bite the bait of the gospel. But understand and realize this today. If you're not a follower of Christ you're not a Christian. The only person that can clean you up is not us, but the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we're in the fishing business. Jesus wants us to be his fishing buddies. And there are a lot of fish out there ready to bite, and we've got the bait to catch almost any fish. It's time for us to take the bait, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And folks, listen, it's time for us to go fish. Let's pray together. Mm-hmm.